Hello, this is Peter Stewart, Get A Better Broadcast, Podcast and Video Voice. And at the moment, over the next few days, we're going to be talking about accents. And today, how an accent may make or break a career. Again, an advisory on, on, on this section. I'm not saying you should change your accent, just giving you some information and thoughts about this particular topic. And with any of this information on how you speak, whether it's accent or diction or whatever... Be interested, be aware, have wonder and curiosity, have a play with your voice. Maybe listen to it in a slightly different way, but don't get stressed. You have a great voice already. Stressing over it will ironically affect it and you. I'm just helping you get a better broadcast, podcast and video voice, if you so choose with some handy hints over the course of these short daily episodes. Now, having said that, not everyone agrees with me. If if you're working for maybe a regional radio or TV station, for example, then having a pronounced accent from outside that area may cause you problems, particularly if it's from the wrong side of the river, the wrong side of the railway tracks, the wrong side of the county or state divide in in a neighbouring state, or maybe there's an area with whom there's some historical, sporting or religious antipathy or antagonism, yeah? You have got to have the right accent in those kinds of situations. And presenters with an accent from a foreign country may have an added problem, certainly for broadcast stations who usually want to reflect their listeners and and how they sound. I mean, would your delivery sit well in a show on a classical music station or a rock or a country music station? What what about a youth chart-based station or or a news and documentary station or or a radio or TV station or a documentary that's going to be aired in another country. Now, of course, a station programmer or a producer of some content that's going to be sold around the world may decide to break the audience's expectations, yeah, and and go with someone completely different. I remember back in the day on on, on a kid's wildlife TV programme, and instead of having a middle-aged guy, they had a young guy with spiky hair and a completely different accent out of the normal, yeah? It was a bit more London and uh, dropping lots of lots of T's and D's and also had a problem saying his R's and now he is one of the most famous wildlife broadcasters in the UK. So these things can work. But what about a well-spoken Brit on a New York-based rock station. It's unlikely, but it could happen. And of course, if you're podcasting, or YouTubing, or Zooming, or webinaring, pan-global broadcasters like you don't have such concerns of geographical borders and sensibilities, but it always comes down to the same thing. If you want to communicate, people in your target audience have got to be able to understand you. Otherwise, you're not getting your message across. They won't be able to react, empathise, react, buy from you. Whatever your aim is in your message may fall at the first hurdle. People just don't understand you or don't accept the way you sound, rightly or wrongly. Tomorrow on the show, the story of Bailey and the beach, as Get A Better Broadcast podcast and video voice continues. From London, I'm Peter Stewart. (laughs) 